When we're viewing patches or sound sources in the sound source browser, we can sort the results a variety of ways depending on what we have set here. Now we have alphabetical, reverse alphabetical, and we have featured, which is the default. And what that does is it puts the newest patches or sound sources that have been added to Omnisphere at the top of the list. So whenever there are patch updates that you download and install, it'll update the featured patches and those newest ones will appear at the top. We can also sort by ratings. And this is a system of giving sounds ratings that we can sort by. So for example, let's say I click over here and give this one one star. You can click and add as many stars as you want, up to five stars, and just click on them again to get rid of them. And as you get rid of them, you can get rid of the last one by clicking away in the empty space, or you can command click on it. So you can give sounds ratings like that, and then you can sort by ratings, and you'll have your patches sorted in order of preferred ratings. I'm just going to get rid of them all right now. I just clicked on that one, so it loaded it. And we're going to talk about loading sounds in a moment, just command clicking there to get rid of them. So we can sort by ratings and obviously revert to any of the other sort criteria using that. And user is a way of sorting by patches that have been created and saved by specific users. We're gonna get into that in another video when we look at saving patches. Now, when we click on a sound, it selects it and it loads it. And if we want to audition it, we can use this audition button and it'll audition whatever sound is selected and loaded. And that works fine, but we have an auto play audition setting in the browser settings. I'm gonna click this little zoom icon to get in here. And we have audition auto play. And with that enabled, when we click on a sound, it'll audition it as we select it. So you may or may not want that. You can turn it on or off with that. And when it's on, we can set what pitch we want it auditioned at and the length of time that we want the audition happening. Now we have progressive loading. And what this means is when you load a sample or a patch rather that has a lot of samples, it lets you play and hear the sounds as soon as the first samples are loaded. So you don't need to wait for the entire sample set to get loaded. You can play it almost instantly. And it's generally a good thing to keep on. We have browser synchronization. And this kind of relates to what we were talking about in one of the other videos about locking in the search. What it does is, it retains the current attribute selections when another part or layer is selected. And this is really useful. Let me give you an example. Let's say I'm searching for guitars and I want to create a multi with a bunch of guitars because I want to try them out in the arrangements that I'm working on. So I've got a bunch of guitars here. I load one in. Let me just turn off that auto audition. So I got one loaded in on part one now. And when browser synchronization is enabled, when I switch to another part, either by closing that and switching another part like there, let's say, for example, opening it up, it'll maintain the same attributes. And similarly, I can just switch there and it'll maintain the same attributes by virtue of browser synchronization being on. And it works great in the sound source browsers as well. When you want to search out different layers, you can make sure that your attributes remain locked. So this works great. And with the feature that we looked at in the previous video, we can lock in the text as well when we're using that search field. Now, category sensitive attributes, we already looked at. We've seen that when we click the different categories, the different attributes change. And when that's disabled, we can keep the same ones. Now, another factor in loading in sounds is using this light version setting. It lets you reduce or thin the number of samples that are loaded with each patch or multi. And it's useful, particularly when we're loading in trillion sounds into Omnisphere, if you own both of them, because trillion patches can be sometimes one or two gigabytes in size. So let's go into here and we can turn it on or off and we can see the memory that's used and we can thin the samples that are gonna be used based on a variety of criteria. For patches that use round robins, we can limit the number of round robin samples that are used or go no limit. We can also limit the velocity layers to velocities above or below any specific value that you set there because a lot of them are multi-sampled. We can limit to a single velocity or every fourth velocity layer, every third layer, et cetera. We can limit to using legato mode or not. And this is, again, mainly relevant for the Trillion libraries. And this is where it gets really interesting. We can use pitch thinning. And when you use no limit, it'll load in full sound. Like, for example, let me just close the browser for a moment. I'm going to turn off light version. I'm going to load a sample in. Let me go to guitars first. And I'm going to type in stick on a bed. 
That should be enough. There's the sound I want. Stick on a bed of chaotic vibes. Now, if I look in the zoom here, we'll see that it's taken up 363 megabytes. But I can train the pitch. I can have it restricted to only major scales or minor scales or specific intervals or train it to use only the notes I need. So, for example, I'm going to play you a little melody that I have here. So I don't need the full range. What I'm going to do is set this to begin training, and I can either play the notes on my keyboard or play this little region in, and it'll learn those notes and velocities. And then when I finish the training, it'll remember only those and load only that subset of samples in. So let's begin learning the training. I'm going to hit finish training and we'll see now it's reduced to 190 megabytes. So now when I save this patch, I can save it with the light version enabled. We see it flashing here, letting us know that there's a reduced sample set loaded and it'll load in with that. And I can use this keep light version selected so that when I'm going through and auditioning different sounds, it'll stay lit and load them more quickly. So that's a little overview of how we can use the favorites and how we can sort and how we can use the browser settings and also the light version to manage our patches. See you for more in the next video.